Hey guys, this is Michelle. As promised, I'm back to let you know what happened at my recent um, appointment with my surgeon and my um, nutritionist. So, um, this month is my second month of medically supervised weight loss, but it's my third visit to the doctor's office because the first visit is the day that I got my, you know, my initial weigh-in and got all my initial instructions and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and read to you what my weights are because I'm not even going to try to memorize them. So when I first went into the doctor's office, which was May 24th, my weight, starting weight, was 287.8. And then last month, I was down to 276.8. And then today, no wait, 276.6, not that it matters. <laughs> uh, and then yesterday, I was... 271.8 so it's exactly 16 pounds so I've lost 16 pounds in two months and I'm very happy with that that's actually right on track with my goal that I made up in my mind um, just in case you this is the first time that you've watched me um, you know I have a six month supervised weight loss but my insurance company does not require me to lose any weight. It doesn't require, it doesn't say I can't gain any weight. There's no requirements at all. It just says that I have to do it, but there are no requirements. However, my surgeon's office requires me to lose weight every single month, and I cannot have a gain, um, not one gain any, any month. So even if my weight loss overall, it, even if my weight is overall a loss, <clears throat> if my weight month to month, if I gain, they will make me start the program over again. And I was wondering if maybe that was a scare tactic, but I have recently found out that it is not a scare tactic, and there have been several people who have had to start the program over again. I'm in a Facebook group just for, um, you know, people here in Arizona that are going through this process. And a lot of the people in the group go to the same center that I go to, just because there's four doctors in my center. I don't know, I guess it's pretty, a pretty popular one. And so, well, it's, well, there's four doctors in my center. And they have a lot of support groups every single month, like four or five five or six different support groups. And so a lot of people that go to other centers come to, you know, where I'm going to have my surgery, they come there for the support groups. And the women, the, you know, Facebook administrators for my group actually recruit a lot of people there for this group, for the Facebook group. And so that's probably one of the reasons why quite a lot of the people go to my same center, even though we do have people that go to some of the other, uh, you know, bariatric centers, you know, here in Arizona. Okay, <laughs> long-winded story. So where was I? So they require me to lose weight every single month. And so I just made up, you know, arbitrarily in my mind, I thought, you know, I think it would be good if I lost... 10 pounds the first month, because that's, you know, you always lose more at the beginning of a diet, and then five pounds every month after that. So actually, I'm one pound ahead of that goal, since I am 15 pounds down. Oh, sorry about the dogs. There's a... Girls! There's a truck or probably a school bus, I think, outside. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I'm ahead of my goal. So I am very happy about that. I'm going to pause this for a second so I can give them a treat. Okay, sorry about that. The control to pause and the control to stop the video, they're very close to each other. And so, you know, I always have to squint to look to see, um, make sure I'm pressing the right one. Okay, that doesn't, that's not important. Okay, so 
The one thing that happened at my visit that I was kind of annoyed about was the fact that, okay, so when I made my appointment for this visit, they told me, you know, like I wanted my appointment to be in the morning just because, you know, since I'm not going to eat before my weigh-in, of course, it's easier to just get it done with early in the morning. And they told me that, um, you know, that's fine that I could have it in the morning, but my particular surgeon is not available in the morning on Tuesdays, that he's only available in the afternoons. And so I went ahead and I scheduled my appointment for, you know, 1 p.m. so that I could make sure that I meet with my surgeon. Because last month, my appointment was at 9 a.m., and they had told me that I was going to meet with a physician's assistant, but instead, they, um, I met with one of the other surgeons. And I was kind of annoyed because since I thought I was meeting with the physician's assistant, I didn't prepare any questions. And so this time, I was all ready to ask my surgeon questions because, you know, I had starved myself all day so that I can do this weigh-in, really, so that I can be able to talk to my surgeon. And guess what? I end up getting a physician's assistant, which I did not ask her any questions at all. Um, you know, she looked like she was about 15 and was all happy and perky, which um, I don't know. If I don't know them, happy, perky people get on my nerves. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, it, it turned out that I didn't ask her any questions at all. And then when I came out of the room, I saw that my surgeon was sitting out there um, and he did look busy, so maybe it was just a busy day or something, but I'm a little annoyed by that. And so next month, once again, my appointment is at 1 p.m. on a Tuesday, and I better get to talk to him because actually next month I'll have even more things to discuss, and I really would prefer to discuss them with him and not the physician's assistant. So that was the one part of my appointment that didn't go quite the way that I wanted it to. So then the second part of my appointment was meeting with the new dietitian. And I'm making sure to call her dietitian because I called her nutritionist and she corrected me and said that she's a dietitian. And so actually I looked it up because I was wondering what the difference was and I can't tell you in detail what it was because I looked this up last night. But I did read that all dietitians are nutritionists, but not all nutritionists are dietitians. And it looks like you know, dietitians re, uh, have a lot more education than nutritionists. So um, I could see why, you know, she would correct me and say, you know, I'm a dietitian. So my dietitian, this was the first time that I met her. Uh, once again, if you've listened to my other videos, um, during my initial visit, I met the nutritionist only for about five minutes, and then she quit. Like, literally a few days after my visit, I found out that she quit after being there for years. Um, and so then for my next visit, I had a substitute nutritionist, and uh, we kind of got into, you know, a little disagreements about my food log. And so I was really worried, concerned this time, you know, okay, so this is the third one. What is she going to say about my food log? I mean, really, it's like how much can they say because I'm losing weight? I mean, to me, if I'm eating relatively low carb and I'm losing weight, you know, how can you really complain? And basically that is about the approach that this dietitian took. You know, she looked at my food log because I'm required to turn in my food log. And so I print out uh, my log from my fitness pal. I log every single day. And, you know, she glanced at it and she's like, you know, it looks like you're doing pretty good. This is, you know, it's a good job. And she only glanced at it. I don't think she actually read <laughs> anything. Um, because then she started asking me questions. She wanted to know if I snacked in between meals. And, you know, she said it in a way to imply you know, I hope you don't snack because that's bad. And I was like, yes, I do snack. In between meals, it's part of my plan. And I 
you know, I plan my healthy snacks in. And then, so then she was like, oh, okay. And she was like, well, give me an example. And so I gave her an example actually of a recent snack that I just had um, where I mixed up an ounce of goat cheese with a laughing cow cheese square. I mixed those up and I put those in, uh, you know, put it in the celery. And it was really, really good. I liked that a lot. Um, you know, the saltiness from the goat cheese and then the crispy celery. That was that was a winner. And then, like, another day, I was um, really hungry. And so then I also had some slices of ham um, with that celery and cheese. And it was, yeah, it was really good. So, like, a lot of snacks like that, um, you know, I've been trying to incorporate into my diet. And actually, one thing that I did, just for you guys, just in case you care, I went through and I figured out my average, uh, you know, macronutrients for the weeks, just so you can have an idea about, you know, how I'm eating. So for the last seven days, for example, my average amount of protein was 88 grams. My average number of carbs was 78 grams, and my average fiber was 17, so that's net carbs was 61. And the week before that, my average protein was 105 grams of protein, 101 carbs, but 23 grams of fiber that week, so my net carbs were 78. And pretty much that's about how every single, most weeks are. I mean, as I go down, you know, my net carbs are all in the 60s and the 70s, except for the week that had the 4th of July in it. I went kind of high um, that week. But, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much um, what I'm doing. And um, so at first she didn't say anything about the carbs or anything, so I think she wasn't paying very close attention. She was just... You know, going down the list really, down her list and questioning me about different things like, you know, am I getting in protein? Am I avoiding snacks? And then the question, <laughs> am I replacing one meal a day with a protein shake? And my answer, no, no, I am not doing that. Um... And so, you know, she's like, so she looked kind of confused. I think maybe because of the way that I said no, because I was getting ready for an argument. And she's like, why? And I said, well, you know, I said, I am doing it a few days a week, but I just don't see why I need to do it when I can still eat real food and get my protein from food. And she's like, well, you know, we think that it's a good idea just so you can get practice in drinking protein shakes before surgery. Now, okay, forgive me if I'm wrong, and you know, you guys who are um, post-op, do you think that it would have helped you more, to be more successful if you had practiced drinking shakes more often before your surgery? You know, like four or five months before your surgery, drinking per protein shakes and really getting the technique down? I mean, does that, make you more successful after surgery? I mean, who needs to practice drinking protein shakes? That I do not understand. And so it's like, after she said that, I said, you know, I really don't want to do it because I don't want to get tired of drinking protein shakes. I know that, you know, immediately after surgery and actually immediately before surgery, because I have a two week liquid diet, protein shakes only, that I'm going to be drinking protein shakes, and so I don't want to get sick and tired of them now when I can eat real food, when it's going to be a staple of my life, at least for a short period of time afterwards. And when I said that, she was like, okay, you know, I agree. She said, I agree, but then she was like, well, at least you are drinking them a few times a week. I, I don't know. I don't understand that. I really, I don't understand why it matters. Um, and actually, one of the things that the physician's assistant said to me when she, you know, came into the room, you know, besides congratulating me on my weight loss, she wanted to know what protein shake am I drinking? <laughs> like, why does it matter? 
And I, you know, I told her about my iconic protein, which at first she was frowning about. And then I said, it meets all the requirements. You know, I know. So, yes, I got my protein shake. Um, really, the only thing the physician's assistant asked me was what I'm doing for exercise. Do I have any problems with my exercise uh, routine? Um, yeah, what protein shake am I drinking? And am I having any problem, you know, with my nutrition? You know, basically, that was all she said. And, um, you know, I wonder if she even looked at my chart because, you know, I had a new diagnosis of high blood pressure and a new blood pressure medication, but she didn't bring that up. And that actually was one of the things I had wanted to talk to my surgeon about, but hopefully next month. Okay, so back to the nutritionist. Um, you know, basically, I did like her. I liked her because, and I don't know if I can make this make sense, but she didn't seem 100%, she didn't seem concerned, I guess. So because she didn't seem all that concerned about exactly what I was doing, she wasn't, you know, like the previous nutritionist, really wanted me to do what she said. <laughs> Whereas this nutritionist was more like, well, it looks like you what you're doing is working for you. So continue doing that with these few little tips. And she didn't really seem to care. She didn't seem to care that much. But I don't know, not in a bad way. I don't know, I can't make it make sense. Maybe it's like she she knows that this is, you know, this is pre-surgery and since I'm losing weight, you know, why sweat it? Um, the one interesting thing she did was she wanted me to tell her what thing am I going to work on this month so that I can come to her and say, you know, this is what I have accomplished. So the first thing off the top of my, my head, I just thought, you know, okay, no fast food because, um, you know, this past month I did have fast food about three or four times. And so then she started talking about, um, you know, how you can eat healthy fast food or burger without a bun. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's true. I guess what I mean is I mean no burgers with a bun because, you know, I've done both this past month. So what I really mean is no bad fast food. But fast food salads, you know, with a dressing that's low in calories and carbs or a burger without a bun, those things I, I am going to do. And so then she was like, and, you know, make sure that you're keeping your calories below 50. And I was like, oh, well, that's not something that I've been doing. And she's like, oh, well, definitely do that. And so I was like, okay, you know, I, once again, I mentioned last month that the nutritionist said that I should try to get my uh, carbs between 50 and 70 grams. And I tried doing that at first, and then I stopped doing it. <laughs> I mean, I came very close to my net carbs being around 70. Um, but I, I wasn't really trying very hard. And so this time, for my new dietitian, I am going to... I am going to make my net carbs be 50. <laughs> she didn't say anything about total carbs or net carbs. I'm sure she probably meant total carbs, but I'm going to pretend that she meant net carbs just for this month. I mean, you know, I have all these months. I, I want to ease into it. So this month, uh, so for August, my goal is net carbs of 50 or less. And then we'll see, you know, what she says, and then we'll go on, you know, from there. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, so she gave me this uh, handout where, you know, it just gave me some protein facts and fruit facts and vegetables. You know, they said that I could have one or two servings of fruit a day, but they really want it to be berries. And I said, well, what about apples? Because apples are in season right now. And she's like, well, you know, apples are high in carbs, so we really prefer for you not to do apples. So I have two apples on my counter right now that I really need to eat, and uh, then I'll follow her advice and just do berries. Um, the other thing that they already started have started talking about is um, what my serving sizes are going to be. So like on this handout, it tells me, 
you know, day of surgery, two weeks post-op, one month post-op, three months post-op, and then one year post-op. And they have it, you know, different between women and men. And so she was going through these. And I was like, oh, you know, why are you reading these to me now? And she's like, well, you know, every month we want to introduce these to you and just really get you into the habit of thinking about it and knowing what it is you're going to be doing later. But, you know, I do think that's a good idea. And I'm not really going to read through these things. Um, it's no different, really, from what everyone else has um, except for, I think a lot of people, it seems like most people really were just eating protein right after surgery. And on this, even two weeks post-op, it says one to two ounces of protein and one fourth cup of veggie or fruit per meal. And so every single, you know, like one month post-op, three months post-op, with every meal, they want you to have protein plus veggies and fruit. So they want me to have less protein so that I have room for my veggies and fruit. Um, that seems slightly different than what I've heard other people say. Um, and then the other thing that's kind of different that I have not been doing is they, you know, so I've been weighing all of my food. But on here they said that we should measure the fruit and vegetables in a cup instead of in measuring cups instead of using the scale I'll try that and see what the difference is um, and so then this next page this is really stuff that you're going to be doing after surgery but these are habits that they want me to start practicing now so uh, structuring my meals three meals a day protein plus vegetables and some fruit um, and then they're claiming that after surgery, I'm still going to have three meals a day. But I know I'm going to have more than three meals a day. Um, they don't want you to use protein drinks as a meal replacement after surgery. Really? But they want me to use protein drinks as a meal replacement now? I haven't actually read through the, all of this. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be reading it um, now. I, I brought it out because there's two things on here that I really wanted to discuss. One, the one habit that I don't know how I'm going to be able to do is no solid food four hours before... Oh, oh I'm already up to 22 minutes. Uh, no solid food four hours before bedtime. I go to bed early because I start working early, but and I also get off pretty late. So I get off most days at 5.30, 6, and I try to go to bed by 10. So there's really no way that I can stop eating by, uh, you know, four hours before bedtime unless I eat while I'm working, which I don't want to do because I already eat breakfast while I'm working and I eat lunch while I'm working. So I don't want to also have dinner while I am working. So that's one thing that I'm not even going to try to do, but I am going to, you know, I decided just in my mind, let's just say 7 p.m., no eating after 7, no matter what time I go to bed. So if I go to bed at 10, that's three hours. If it's a night that I'm staying up late, then it will be four hours. So that's one thing that I'm going to try. And then the other thing, of course, is the no eating or drinking. No, no drinking while you are eating. And so this is something that I want to tell you guys. Um, gosh, I wish this wasn't so long. Um, you know what? I'm... I'm sorry to leave you hanging, but I have a fat girl secret that has to do with uh, drinking while you're eating your meals. But I don't have time to talk about that right now because I have to get to the dentist. I will be doing another video this week, I hope, or this weekend where I'll be talking about rewards. And then I'm going to tell you about that um, fat girl secret. So. Thank you to all of my new subscribers. I have a whole bunch of subscribers and I really do appreciate. So thank you to the old subscribers and the new subscribers. And I will get back to you sometime later on this week or this weekend. Bye.